All right, hi everyone. Welcome back to another Blender community roundup. I know it's been a while. In this series, we take a look at interesting things happening in and around the Blender community, as well as things kind of tangential to Blender and 3D design. Given that it's been such a long time since the last one, I figured I'd try and pack it as much as I could this time. So we've got a couple of animated shorts. We've got some tutorial channels, software updates, interesting courses and more. So if you would like some curated Blender educational content, then stick around because there's a lot to learn from. And just before we get into it, this particular video is not sponsored, but you can sponsor a future video by checking out our casual sponsorship system. So let's get into it. So the first thing I have to mention is this excellent short film by Sub and Shotty called Watermelon Girl, which I'm sure many of you have probably already seen because it garnered a lot of attention and it is fantastic. I don't really want to spoil the story because I feel like you should go watch it yourself, but it does have a lovely moral to it about community. And the thing that's most impressive to me is this commitment to a very visually pleasing art style. It's very, how would I describe it? Like paper, clay, fairy tale, almost toy-like, but it's a style that Sub and Shotty is quite known for now. We've recommended some of their work in the past, including the Crafty Asset Pack, which makes a lot of this stylized stuff available to other artists. The other thing that's impressive about it is it's taken five years to make, which really is a big commitment to a project. And I know that's something a lot of us struggle with in the community, sticking to large animated ideas. So I think it's something worth celebrating and definitely worth checking out. Southern Shotty did ask if I would be willing to share it when it came out. But obviously, for those of you that know, around that time, I've been dealing with a bit of an eye problem. So yeah, I just wanted to give a quick congratulations and thank you, Southern, for inspiring the rest of us in the Blender community. Community. Next up, if you enter video game asset creation, then friend of the channel, CG Bird, also known as CG Julia, has recently gotten back into making educational content, and this time with a focus on game assets. Now, Julia is from Ukraine. She has a great sense of enthusiasm about her work as well. So I just wanted to put her in here quickly just to give you a reminder to check her out. She has a new Discord community as well, if you want more places to engage with other artists and take part in discussions. Next up, I wanted to share an add-on. So this one actually comes from someone who's part of my Discord community called Spaghet Me Not, love the name. It's called Auto Constraints. And this one's actually pretty useful. So what it does is depending on the context, so where you're looking when you're manipulating objects, it automatically applies constraints. You do have customization over the settings that control this effect as well. I actually think it's quite nice for this add-on. They're providing you with options for a compact and an extended version of the UI. I've never really thought about doing that, two different types of interface. So to give you an example here, this is like default moving things around in Blender. You've got a room, you press G to move it around, but it's kind of just floating all over the place because it's mostly based on your camera. Enabling the auto constraints. Now, when you move things around, it can tell how you're looking at the scene. So now when it's moving things, it knows to do it on that plane. So it's constraining you to the X, Y axis in this case. This makes it really handy for if you're doing like scene building and general environment and composition and stuff. You don't have to keep hitting hotkeys to try and constrain it yourself. So I think it's actually quite a nice idea for a feature. Again, something that could probably be useful in just main Blender if they ever wanted to make that themselves as well. I like that. I haven't actually started using it yet, but I should probably pick this up because the more I'm watching these demonstrations, I'm thinking, yeah, actually, I kind of, I recognize myself bumping into these issues quite a lot. You don't think about how often you're having to like shimmy things around in the 3D viewport. All right, next up, I'm not sure if you saw, but for Blender 4.2, there was a bit of a celebration of a new node, the Ray Portal node. Now, I'm not the best one to explain this. For me, it reminds me of like render textures from Unity, but it effectively allows you to like recycle view data in shaders. So we can see some demonstrations from Ben here of like, you know, pushing this in very weird and surreal ways. But one of the most obvious examples would be doing actual portals using the Ray Portal node. So just taking a quick look here on one of Ben's live streams, you can see how this works. Finally, we can actually have proper portal effects. So I think there are going to be some really useful use cases and really creative use cases as well. Because it's so weird watching it work with like rotational angles as well. Okay, next up, there is a Kickstarter project called Blender Starts Here. So this is supposed to be a video game that helps people learn how to use Blender Blender, or at least get them used to the hotkeys and the concepts of Blender, like the muscle memory. At the time of recording this, it's only really just started. It's Kickstarter, so hopefully I can get this out in time. There is also a demo available on Steam, but this would be a nice thing to get off of the ground and actually get going. There is also the possibility of having some creators appear in the game in the form of like collectible cards and stuff. So if you are a creator, there is a form you can fill out as well to get yourself added. Something that they've invited me to do, but I haven't filled out the form yet. Here you go. I think it's nice because I don't know, I'm sure people have done all different kinds of of games in and around Blender, but I think it's nice to have something that seems more targeted towards a younger audience. And it kind of legitimizes Blender in a different way, I suppose. It will feel a bit more mainstream, should we say, once there's like a, a proper game helping people get into it. But obviously niche things like this can sometimes be a bit tricky to find backing or a community for. So I just want to make you aware of it. If you have a few pennies to spare, then I don't know, it'd be a shame if this one didn't hit its goal. Also for the developers, do I really have to fill out a form? Can I just give you like a picture of my face and then you do the rest? I should say as well, there are some of 
available rewards. So this is quite usual for Kickstarter. The more you give, the more rewards you tend to get. So yeah, come on everyone. If you're willing, let's show some love to our game dev friends. See if we can get something a little bit different off the ground. So next up, someone I've been following on Instagram for a while, Yakovlev or Yak of Art, as well as being a very interesting artist, they're also making educational content. And there tends to be a lot of uh, Japanese inspired stuff, as well as deeply moody and cyberpunk elements. So as you can see, Evangelion, Cyberpunk, Akira, Spirited Away. I know that there's quite a large contingent in the Blender community that are massive fans of these shows and these IPs. Uh, me in particular, of course, I love Blade Runner. So I might uh, take a quick look at that later. But yeah, Yakovlev has been a dedicated follower, especially on Instagram. And well, many of you don't know, but I have like, you know, the close friends thing on Instagram. What I do is I pick out some of my favorite creators that I've spoken with every now and again, and they get more of a behind the scenes look at my regular life. And Yak is kind of one of these inner circle creators. So yeah, I hope you're doing well. Keep up the work. Check out his Instagram as well. And also thanks for the support as well. I want to learn a bit more about you in the future. We should have a cool sometime. When I get into the new studio in a couple of months, I'm going to start up some podcast things again, a bit like the old Blender Nest. So there'll be an opportunity to learn a bit more about creators and present them to people. But we'll have to wait and see. So next up, another short film by Carl Poiser. I hope I said the last name correctly. And Joseph Roberts. So Carl actually sent me this on Instagram. And Carl is an artist that I've seen a lot of their work kind of floating around the community. Lol. And I've always liked it. There's this grouping of artists in the Blender community that I don't really know how to describe the style. It's like this rugged but colorful sci-fi. We've got like Rob Turpin, another artist I want to tell you about that's actually started learning Blender recently that does like these weird field world uh, spaceship type stuff. We've got Ian Huber, of course, that's doing their, how would I describe it? Shanty scrap sci-fi. And Carl Poiser is kind of like on another area of this Venn diagram. If I don't know, maybe I'll describe it a bit more of like a pastely scrap sci-fi. This probably sounds really weird. I know it's always weird when someone else tries to explain your style to you, but this is just my interpretation. Anyway, the short film is really funny. So it's comedic, it's very British as well. Like it's very bantery. It's very high quality and available to watch on Vimeo. And I think a lot of you will probably appreciate it. It also goes to show that you can make something really engaging without having to do, you know, massive dramatic action set pieces and hyper complex animation. Just a bit of good dialogue, a nice eye candy art style and a splash of comedy. That's really all you need to make something engaging. So thank you to Carl for showing this to me and also to everyone else who worked on it. We can see here in the description of the video. Again, I feel like I've been so out of the loop with the Blender community for a while that I want to learn more about the people that make things like this. With that in mind, I do just want to say here that I, of course, have my own Discord server. And in this server, there's a channel called Resources. You're welcome to join. And if there's anything you find in the community that you think might deserve to be shown on a community roundup or you think other people need to learn more about, then feel free to join our server and then post links in that resource channel. Try not to be too spammy and also try not to self-advertise. We do have some rules about fairness with that. Or also just join the server for fun. We have a bit of a tradition. I tend to say good morning to everyone every day. We have discussions about new things happening in the community and you can share your work there as well, work in progress or finished projects. I'll leave a link in the description if you're interested. So next up, you know, a little while ago, I did a video talking about a different way to model in Blender using SDF modeling, so sign distance fields or functions. And I spoke about this tool being developed called Conjure SDF. Well, Joao has given us an update. Again, on Twitter, this is where most of the updates come from. They said added the ability to change the nesting structure of primitives. The UI is also getting some love now to make it a bit smoother. And the public alpha seems to be in one week with more updates coming soon. Now, always take deadlines with a pinch of salt, but it's interesting to see that we may be getting a bit closer to something that everyone can try. So just to give you a quick explanation as well, although you can go and watch the original video. The SDF method of modeling effectively replaces regular geometry in the way that instead of thinking about it as actual objective geometry coming together, think about it as shapes described by mathematical functions. And when they come together, they automatically blend. So when you're in this kind of concepting phase using these shapes, you don't have to worry at all about geometry or how things blend together. You know, the whole issue with Booleans, having perfect topology, describing curves, otherwise things look weird with the normals and all that. You don't really need to worry about that here. And then once you're happy with a shape, there is the possibility of then converting it into a mesh. And that is where you may encounter some issues with the general flow of topology, but really for concepting and like actually just building a shape from scratch, it's quite a liberating method, should we say. So I mentioned Rob Turpin earlier as one of these people that kind of fits within that the genre of like scrap heap sci-fi. That's probably a better way of putting it, scrap heap sci Does anyone remember Scrap Heap Challenge? That was a show that's probably more for the UK people. I bet that's where some of the style comes from. Like it's been interesting seeing someone who is already a proficient and professional 2D artist start to learn Blender and then seeing what kind of things they make with it and how it lines up with their previous art style. Looking at this as well, it kind of reminds me I want to get back to making some kit bash pieces and packs. There's something so fun about slapping kit bash models together and seeing something cool come out of it. Anyway, yeah, Rob, we will watch your career with great interest. So another thing I want to tell you about, this isn't specifically Blender related, is Pure Ref. Now, a lot of you will know this software because pretty much all of us in the community use it for managing and looking at references. So it's basically like an infinite canvas, but for like reference imagery and stuff. Um, what you're seeing on the screen now might be a little bit of a sneak preview teaser for some future stuff related 
to my current product I'm working on. The reason why I wanted to mention PureRef is because version 2 came out somewhat recently and it includes a whole bunch of new additional features, which I'm sure a lot of you will find useful. So one of them in particular is the ability to draw on things. Finally, we can use it as like a presentation tool. And there's also like hotkeys you can use like one, two and three. You can like draw arrows onto things. It's just, it's sick. I love it. PureRef has always been great for like having on like a side monitor or something while you're working. So if you're trying to make something from references or if you just want inspiration, it's always been just like a fantastic tool for that. You can embed the image data in the save file of PureRef or you can have it link to images on your machine as well to like save space for the actual reference file. There are different ways to kind of treat it like a presentation tool as well by using like the arrow keys. So it serves multiple purposes and then you can just like scroll straight out of it again. So again, not sponsored or anything. I just really love the software. A lot of us do. So if you've been using PureRef and you didn't know that there's a new version available with new features, then this is your public service announcement. But one thing to keep in mind now is that there is a priced version as well. So this isn't actually any extra features. It's more for commercial usage. So many of us have been using the software for years for free without giving anything back to the creator and you can still download it for free. But now if you want to use it for anything commercial, such as, well, this video will probably have ads on it. So this is commercial. I have paid for the commercial license and there are kind of different levels of that. And it's only like, what, $49? I've definitely gotten more than $49 use out of it over the years. So if you like PureRef and if you like what they've been doing, then worth supporting, I would say. Now, another video I want to recommend to you is from Alberto Petronio. So this is someone I've met at the Blender conference. They've done talks, specifically their talks mostly revolve around hard surface type work because they've done stuff for Star Citizen and other projects as well. But this was an interesting one because it's kind of like this talk through of the workflow of using Blender for a really cool and really advanced hard surface work. So you can see some grease pencil, conceptual work, blocking out, shape descriptions should we say they even go into things like materials as well so how to make stuff look good for hard service materials i probably have quite a lot to learn from this as well so alberto i'll try and follow along with this sometime soon and the results they come up with are always just mwah, fantastic and there's also another talk they've done about generating spaceships that was at a previous blender conference which should be available on the blender youtube channel but again if this is the kind of thing you find satisfying then highly recommend it and alberto does have their own youtube channel as well so if you want to check out these things for inspiration it's mostly a lot of like turntables and short clips not always though because this is where you'll find the copy of the Manchester talk. But yeah, there's a lot to break down. I also want to take a moment to quickly self-advertise that on our side of things, for YouTube members of this channel and for my patrons, I've started a new series of exclusive content. You can find this on curtisalt.online slash members called Principles of Creation. So when I'm providing a behind the scenes look of me doing product development in this series, in this one, it's more discussion based. And the first video here is about where to source advice. So you can sit down with me and I talk to you about how to surround yourself with the right kind of creative people, those that are kind of trained or attuned to providing advice and critique in good ways and helpful ways, finding the right kinds of people that will support you as a creative. So this is the kind of thing that I wasn't sure whether to put on this main channel or not, because I know that a lot of people would find it useful, but hyper-specific discussions like this are also algorithmic suicide, which is a really disappointing thing about YouTube. So it will live here for now. If you want a bit more creator to creator advice, then there's an exclusive space for this now for YouTube members and patrons. Talking about valuable creator educational content, the talks from Beacon LA are now up. Now there was a bit of a problem, as far as I heard, where the original talks from the Los Angeles Blender conference were not recorded properly. So people that did the talks were asked to re-record them themselves. That's as far as I know. I haven't actually double checked this. But what this means is there's now a big dump of content for you to enjoy from all different areas of the CG industry the future of automotive design workflow, storyboarding in 3D space, procedural shading. I've been doing a fair bit of automotive stuff recently, so I do need to watch that. Animation tools and style of Dylan Gu. Oh, okay. See, I didn't realize they actually took part in this. Dylan Gu. They were always interesting. And uh, demystifying add-ons, Spencer Magnuson, dedicated member of our community, our little Discord community as well. I really wanted a life-size T-Rex skull. Same, Alex. Oh, weaving art and code together, Spencer Magnuson there as well. So yeah, I love when we get content dumps like this from conferences because it just adds so much value to the education space of the community in one go. Of course, I'll leave links in the description if you want to check these out. Okay, next up, I was recommended to take a look at this baking tool. So this is another paid add-on. It's called Auto Bake, Texture Baker and Exporter. And it basically allows you to do like batch bakes of objects if you want to with a lovely interface there on the side. But the thing that kind of caught my eye about this wasn't just the feature set and how nicely presented all the information is. It's one of the first product creators that I've seen that actually put like a lot of attention into the presentation of just the store page alone. As you can see, it's got like this consistent style. Maybe that's sounds a bit silly because an add-on should obviously be about its features more than its presentation. And my God, there are a lot of features, but it's just something that caught my eye. Baking in Blender is something that does need some die usability improvements. And this is obviously not the only baking helper add-on available. There are free ones I've mentioned before as well. I think Daniel Beister had one, but just letting you know there are more options available if you want to check them out. 
So another creator I wanted to give a brief mention to is Levy Magani, who I'm pretty sure I've recommended in a previous video because I love the art style. But more recently, they've been distributing a set of Geometry Nodes tools. So there's a tool set called Celeste Tools, which helps you to get different stylized effects using Geometry Nodes. I think it's just a fun little thing for those of you that like this kind of style. Also, I find that playing around with Geometry Nodes based tools actually like inside of the node groups and experimenting with them is actually quite a good way to learn Geometry Nodes just by breaking things down, reverse engineering, if you like. So thanks, Levy. But this one is paid as well. Now next up, this is not specifically Blender related, but someone on my Discord server recommended this. It's effectively an article like a text-based tutorial providing again, another hard surface workflow breakdown. But this one goes into like really granular detail about the choices and design process, particularly with regards to the topology, something we don't tend to see a lot of. So it's kind of more of an old fashioned breakdown. And so the reason I wanted to share this is because even if it's not specifically Blender related, I know that there's a subset of people in the community that don't like how everything has become just so YouTube centric or video centric trick and I absolutely love it when you complain to me a youtuber about it so this is just a little something that might be relevant to you if you're that kind of person so it seems like I've shown a lot of paid stuff so far let's show you something free so there's a website called the base mesh and here there are 100% free and cc0 models which means you can use them for anything so yes that includes personal and commercial projects so as far as I know this is a project that's funded by donations and patreon so if you want you can go to the website view the library there are a variety of models you can download all for free so isn't that nice now speaking of free I want to give you a reminder that Reality Capture, the photogrammetry software that's now owned by Epic Games, has now technically gone free with some exceptions. So before it would be like a paper export model or something similar to that. You would be able to create your scans however you like them inside of Reality Capture and then when you wanted to export them you had to kind of pay and the payment amount was like based on the complexity of the object and you paid for the use of credits. But now Reality Capture has gone free for anyone who's making less than a million dollars, which is most people, per year. And if you are making over that then it's still reasonable it's like $1,250 per user per year and if you're making over a million then you know whatever so if you wanted to get into photogrammetry reality capture really is one of the best softwares available for that it's very easy to use and the results are really fantastic as well so that's a really big one to get for free the only thing is you have to get it off of the epic games launcher which i know will annoy some people but i mean it's okay if you're getting something like this then uh, i'd say it's worth it as for another channel, I want to give another shout out to Lewix Lin or Louis Lin, a wonderful artist who again I've been following on Instagram for quite a while. They are continuing to distill their knowledge down into educational material that covers both Blender and Unreal Engine. Seems as though they've got a course coming as well, creating an abandoned church in Unreal Engine 5. But one video in particular I wanted to point out is Understanding Better Lighting, a Blender tutorial. So this one actually came out about four weeks ago at the time of recording. Uh, but it's a good breakdown over the theory of lighting, the things which contribute to like mood, what your focus focusing on how to use this for artistic effect. Obviously the kind of stuff that's right up my alley. All right, I think that's where we're gonna leave it for this community roundup. But again, please feel free to let me know if there's anything you found in the community that you think deserves to be shared. You can also join our Discord server as well. If you wanna help support my channel, again, because I'm in a bit of a lull, I've had a bit of a delay with working on the next product, given all the health stuff, feel free to sign up to my Patreon or join as a YouTube member. And also you can kind of do this for free. On Patreon, you can now join creators for free and it helps you get like email notifications when new things go out. You may also get some extra things every now and again. So there's no reason not to, but for the YouTube members, you get like a little icon by your name that grows over time here in the comments and of course you get access to the exclusive series as well codisold.online slash members which will grow over time and if you made it to the end of this video then feel free to put some kind of well i don't mind put any emoji you like i love asking you to put emojis in the comments to show that you've made it to the end of the video the thing is though youtube responds differently to different types of emojis it's okay with like 99 percent of them and then some of them i think it's it doesn't know whether to interpret it as spam so i'm gonna put a unicorn emoji here you can use that if you like but if not just put anything and i'll i'll understand so thanks for watching everyone Hopefully more coming soon. Stay safe and I will see you next time.